Good everybody, I'm Anthony Goods, a former NBA scout, and I'm back to break down another shooter in my shooter series, Duncan Robinson. Now, Duncan Robinson was a player that I had the privilege of being in the gym with shortly after the pandemic, and I got to see what level of shooter he really is. If you ever been in the gym with an NBA shooter, you know they don't miss much, but I really want to know what separates these elite shooters from each other and what really makes them miss in game. So let's dive into the numbers and figure it out. Duncan shot 39% on the season and was the best uncontested shooter of the group, shooting 56% on uncontested three-pointers. Much like the other shooters, this was only 15% of his shots, but without a doubt, if he was open, these shots were going in. On late contested shots, similar to Steph Curry, Duncan shot 38% from three. Even on tight late contested shots, he didn't seem to be bothered, which I equate to him being a 6'8 shooter. The problem with late hand contests is that you're unable to disrupt vision and elite shooters will hurt you if you don't. Now let's see what Duncan shot on early high hand contests. Last season, Duncan Robinson shot 28% from three on an early high hand closeout or contest. That's a 10% drop just by getting a hand up a little faster. Proximity won't matter as much with the shooter of his size, but an early high hand is shown to really disrupt his shooting percentages. If you're able to get an early high hand contest within tight proximity, his percentages dip even further to 21%. Defender height didn't bother Duncan as much as an early high hand, but defenders 6'4 to 6'5 bothered him slightly more than 6'6 to 6'9 defenders. It was impressive to see Duncan's ability to make shots with a defender in tight proximity. He made a lot of these over the course of the season. Now let's talk about Duncan's movement versus his stationary shooting. When you look at Duncan Robinson's shooting profile, what jumps out first is how much his game is built on movement. Over 40% of his total attempts came off of movement catch and shoot situations. And despite the difficulty, he still knocks those down at 38%, which is elite for that type of shot. As I mentioned before, him being 6'8 probably allows him to get a cleaner look at the rim as opposed to other shooters. But don't just box him in as a movement shooter. His stationary catch and shoot numbers are really strong too. He takes about 20% of his shots in spot of situation and he hits these at a 40.7% rate. He has a higher stationary volume than Stephen Curry and Desmond Bain, and he's super efficient in those situations. Now let's move on and see how he shoots the ball off the dribble. Heading into this study, I didn't expect him to shoot so well off the dribble. I have to admit, I always thought of him as more of just a catch and shoot guy. You wouldn't think of Duncan as a shooter to be pulling up off the dribble, but he took 171 of those last season and hit 39.2%. That's actually better than his movement shooting percentage. So when defenders fly out at him and he sidesteps or attacks off a soft closeout, he's quietly really good at making those. Most defenses try to get shooters to put the ball on the floor, but Duncan is almost equally as good at that as he is in his catch and shoots. Another situation that caught my eye was his shooting percentage when he caught bad passes. The bad passes, in my opinion, are when they're out of the shooting pocket or out of the strike zone, as I like to call it. He still manages to get them off, and like most players, if he catches a bad pass and nobody's around, he still has an ability to make those. But what doesn't get talked about enough is when a bad pass leads to an early high hand closeout or just a slightly more contested shot. On this particular study, Duncan Robinson shot 25% on shots that came from a bad pass. This includes both catch and shoot and a few off the dribble attempts that were forced because of bad passes. Sometimes the difference between a good pass and a bad pass could drop your percentages 15 to 20% because it throws off timing, rhythm, and your footwork. And one of the last things I like to mention is back when I went and watched Duncan Robinson work out back in the day, him, like a lot of other NBA players that I've been in the gym with, they went harder, they went game speed. Now, game speed is different for everybody, 
but he was shooting game shots in the same rhythm that I see in this study. Problem I see with a lot of young players is they take their time and they're shooting almost in slow motion to the point where you're not really getting game reps. So in my opinion, you're wasting reps. You might as well be form shooting. So if there's anything I could encourage coaches and even players to do is when you're in the gym and you're trying to get reps up, make sure that they're game speed reps, whatever your game speed is. But that's all I got for today. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. I uh, really appreciate the support and I'm gonna keep more content coming your way.